Hello everyone, we're here on Industry Transporters today, and, and we're here with some post-video, post-recording commentary, because for some reason, uh, what's it called, uh, XSplit decided not to record the audio of the game for the first 15 minutes, and also not to record the microphone for the first 25 minutes. I'm not sure what's happening there, we'll try to figure that out, so that our next video does actually have commentary. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to remember what I was trying to say last night. Um, so it has been overnight now. So we're looking at a steel industry here. Um, looking for a town. I remember I was looking for a town in order to sell food in. And it's, even though I had set industries to be close. They did not seem to be all too close to the towns themselves. Um, so that's an issue. I think, yeah, I finally found Los Angeles and I decided to build a food chain. So I started building this food chain and eventually I build a rail system to go with it and the rail system ends up failing in ways I haven't seen before. It's interesting to see that certain combinations of track will totally break the um, totally break the uh, pathfinding. So what we gotta do here is we gotta level out the land so we can build our train station here and we gotta clear some trees uh, train station's coming in. Uh, well, now that I do have this opportunity to record this now, I can go ahead and tell you that Marcus has received my diesel engine that I created. And it should be in the next version, so I'm very eager to uh, see the next version and see the diesel train that I made. And it should be pretty awesome. Uh, spent like two or three hours now. It's been like two days, maybe five or six hours working on it. Uh, most of that is because I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to UBW mapping. And, you know, that's just something that's I'm going to have to work on. I haven't, I haven't done it that much, and it's not the easiest. But you can get plugins for 3DS Max that do make it easier. So it's definitely worth doing that. And making the texture itself you really have to have a good source of textures or really just not a paint and make stuff look real it's, it takes time but it's worth it it does make it look nice uh, I went ahead and I um, took that train that I made and I went ahead and I printed it out on my 3d printer um, I suppose I could include an image of that somewhere uh, That'd be interesting. Now, I was thinking what would be cool is if I start streaming again, because I don't know if I'm going to start streaming, but maybe if I start streaming again, just have like a little camera set up next to my printer and have it watch the printer while I play and then have it printing something either related to or from the game or something like that. And during the episode, you can watch, you can watch it print. Uh, I think that'd be, or during a live stream, where I think that'd be amazing. And then I'd have to like pause the game and go, you know, service the machine when it needs it. But you know, you could be playing like StarCraft and you could be printing out like a tank, like a siege tank or something. And I think that'd be amazing. So we're starting to get our, um, our land leveled out here and. It's very dark, you can barely see what's going on. Um, and it looks like in this version, the bank and the world. Uh, I'm not going to really check that. I think the, I'm pretty sure the bank and the world maps still don't work. Um, uh, I'm working on a tutorial for Industry Giants right now. Um, it's not my top priority. My top priority would be Orbit still. I'm still working on Orbit. I'm uh, really working on getting a StarCraft 2 version out as well as updating the tabletop version because 
I really want to start testing it more and more. And, you know, I've already broken. Jesus, fuck, what is that? Like a bumblebee or something. Um, I really need to test it and break it and fix it. And, I mean, it's it's been tested quite a bit now, but really it needs to go through another evolution. Uh, I went through a whole a stage of making a whole upgrade uh, HUD box thing, and I don't, know, I don't want to say it was a waste of time, but I didn't end up using it, and that was at least a week or two of development and a lot of work that is now kind of just going to go to waste, but it's not a waste. Um, what you got to do when you're developing things is you got to take the Pixar approach. And what you do is you, you develop a bunch of stuff and then you throw 90% away and then you make more and you throw 90% of that and you're left with a good you know 10% of stuff that's actually decent and then you build from there. So that's what needs to happen if you want to have a quality product. You got to you gotta cut stuff. And you gotta cut it apart and rebuild it. Destroy and reform. I don't like plastic. Just melt it down and reform it, and there you go. So, still trying to level this out. Um, honestly, the level tool is pretty slow. Uh, definitely, if it could be optimized to be faster that would be better. I even I tried it on my fastest computer, it was still slow. So there's probably a, definitely probably a problem with the collision checking and this the field checking. And it just doesn't do it in an efficient manner. Um, <clears throat> sure it's something that can be fixed. Uh, that's kind of essential to making the game flow better. Um, and the day night cycle, I can already tell it gets really dark at night. It's ridiculous. It's really hard to see anything. Um, you know, again, minor issues, but uh, I've been bringing up minor issues, but you know, then again, it's like I don't really want to call it minor because any issue is an issue and it should be fixed. So. That's how that goes. Um, so what we got hit set up here, we got two train terminals. And now we're going to try and build a train terminal here. But we're not going to be able to build it on top of the rails. And I think you should be able to. Um, so instead of building on top of the rails, we're going to have to clear the area first. Then we're going to have to build a train terminal. And really, if you could skip that, that'd be excellent. Um, really hard to see here because it's all black. Um, I was going to say earlier when I was placing the store, it was really hard to know if it was in the catchment area because the catchment area doesn't really go up hills. So the catchment area should probably be, probably be each, each field or cell of the catchment area. You can see here again on the red, it should probably be... Um, related to the height of that particular part of the map. It shouldn't be based off um, the height of the building. Again, another probably easy fix unless the catchment area is a single object. And that may be true, but if it is each individual object, um, or maybe you could change it to that, that would be optimal. So I was trying to place our factory here, having a little trouble trying to get it in a place that will actually work. Um, still red, and I think I finally did get it here. No, not yet. Okay, so we're just gonna keep trying to place the food factory. Okay, and then we're gonna set its production. And you're gonna have to double click to do that. Okay. No, we to have meat and milk. And there you go, meat and milk. Okay, so now we need to double click on our train terminal. And we're going to buy the most expensive train, I believe. I believe that's what I did. So 
And we're going to buy the most expensive train. Oh, it is 1960. 1960. Yeah, it's 1960. Um, what should happen? Oh, I, I, I remember I said something about the product info. Um, definitely, the products I have not invented yet need some way of telling you that they can't um, be produced yet, other than just a date. I mean, I'm sure that's just something that hasn't been implemented yet. But really, when you're trying to play the game, it's a big issue because now you're trying to make things that aren't out, and you set it all up, and then you realize, oh, it's not the right year. You can't do it yet, and that's cruising. You end up wasting all your money, and you probably have to forfeit the game because you won't be able to continue. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna try to set up. Um, we're gonna try to set it up so that train goes and gets livestock and then carries it to the factory and then just picks up the food but I believe I decide to do something else and uh, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go ahead and add it's going to come back to the farm it's going to come back to the farm and then it's going to go back to the factory and then it's going to go to the store so it's going to load even more livestock and then when it gets to the factory it's going to load um, it's going to finally load the meat and the milk now I'm bringing in 12 livestock, which means I'm going to get four of each milk and meat. So the meat takes one livestock and the milk takes two livestock. So four of the livestock goes goes towards meat, while eight of the livestock goes towards milk, and it evens out production. Unfortunately, my train can only hold. Um, Actually, my train can only hold six items at once. So really, optimally, what I should have done is I should have made it to where the train goes and gets six livestock, and then it goes back and gets three more livestock, and then it brings the meat and the, and the uh, milk to the store. So really, overproduction is something you don't want because you won't be able to sell the extra stock. You'll have to be able to sell your stock cheaper, and that won't really be worth doing. Or you won't be able to set up your logistics so that you can efficiently transport everything <coughs> with one train or a couple of trucks or something. It's going to get complicated. It's a really load balancing is going to be key and that's why I really love that in Industry Giant 2 because you could really um, load balance quite a bit. Industry Giant 2, Industry Giant 1 is a little dry on that aspect. Everything was pretty simple. All you had to do was bring six lumber to a factory and they had skis and they took it to the store. Okay, that was it's not too complicated. Now in Industry Giant, and I can see the trains screwing up on the corner there. Um, and this is giant three. Uh, it's different. It's more complex. And anyway, we're looking at the farm here, and looking at the textures, and I think I'm looking at the windows, and just checking out how it looks. Um, kind of interesting there. Um, so really, you have to bring you know a couple materials together, and then you have to process them, and then you have to move those somewhere else. Um, Really, it could be if you really made more complex products later on that just took tons of stuff but made a lot of profit. That would be you know, amazing and require a lot of setting up to do. Um, you know, there's a there's a game called Factorio, and it's based on making factories, and I think it, it's interesting that. You can set up all these production chains and you have to manage 
everything that goes on. So you can see here that the train went to the first, or went to the uh, station at the factory, the terminal at the factory, in order to drop off its raw materials. But it kept going to the store. Uh, yeah. I don't know how much sugar they have, but not that much. Yeah. Kept going to the store and now it's gonna try and go back. So exactly sure and then later on you'll see that we build a little loop, but it gets stuck on the loop and it's not able to um, deliver its products to these I'll stop and get more chicken. Okay. Now it'll deliver its products to the store. And now we're just looking at ch chicken, trying to see where the waypoint, the current waypoint that it's on. And there's no way to actually figure that out effectively. So we figure out which waypoint the train is currently on. Uh, so I'm going to make a point of, you know, I'm glad it's difficult, but it's almost impossible to make a profit. I have still yet to make a single profit, and I've played maybe five or six times now. Um, vehicle running costs are too high. Uh, I think like Industry Giant 1 and 2, um, focus should be on, I mean, focus on efficient logistics is nice, but focus should be on efficient production chains. And the overproduction or underproduction is what's going to hurt profit. And really, I think the the emphasis on overproduction being a problem is uh, definitely one that I always enjoy. Because if you overproduce, your warehouses fall, fill up, and it's not good. Oh, so you just got the music in. I don't know why I just decided to come in. We're going to try to figure out why I'm not being able to record all the way here. And so the train's going to go back here and try to get some more livestock. Um, I have to figure out what's going on with Exploit and why it's not working. Because it's not good. Anyway, so... We got the loop set up, so now the train's going to be coming back. And you'll see that once it gets to the factory, it tries to turn around. It should turn around. Because it's the second time around, now it should take its products from the factory and deliver it to the store. But what happens, as you'll see, is it goes around the loop and it goes back to the farm. And that's not what should happen. Um, Marcus also talked about uh, putting product images above train cars, and I think that'd be great. Um, like Industry Giant 2, that made it super easy to tell what a train was carrying and what logistics chain it was a part of. In Industry Giant 1, um, I guess there wasn't as much, there wasn't as much variety. And here we can see that we got train, trees and rocks in the water. And yeah, remove, you can remove them, they're there, and it's a problem. Um, I don't have to say I really like this song. Uh, but Industry Giant 2, yeah. But Industry Giant 1, it was really hard. You know, there wasn't as many products, and graphically, it wasn't really a big deal. But at the same time, it did kind of. Especially with good strains, it was like, what is going on here? It's always kind of hard to know. Um, what is going on? So I do think the actual voice, the voiceover from the video is going to kick in pretty soon. But we'll continue here until that does happen. And so... And what we're 
random measure of exploring the map, because I, I rarely take the time to really explore a randomly generated map. I think there's a lot of beauty in, in what's generated randomly, and, you know, it always just kind of goes by the wayside, because it's like, you know, there's nothing really interesting to see, but I think there's interesting things to see. And now you can see here that the train is indeed moving back on itself, or it should have gone to the store. Um, definitely has that route available. And, yeah, we're gonna check on the store. There is nothing there. The week start is in one day, so there should be something there. Just gonna double click on the train. And it looks like there's, it's still full of meat and milk. So it's gonna go back to the farm, and it's gonna be a problem. So, it's gonna go back to the farm. I have to say that the lights at night are really cool. Um, the trains, the vehicles that have lights, all the windows, and all the buildings have lights. That's pretty interesting. Um, just made my decent train, hopefully. Not too bright at night. There you go, we see another animation failure on that thing there. And okay, it's trying to come up. It's kind of having a little bit of trouble getting up this hill. So it might be something I'll consider next time I build and I'll try to build on hills. Being, I can't do anything with this crew. I have to end up demolishing it. And I finally do get the train to go to the store and unload its cargo. Or its shipment. Whatever. I really do like the little train cars though. It's just a little cart container on my bed. Train car. It's um, really like me. It would be nice to have different train cars for wood and steel and stuff, but that's really a minor, that's a, that's more of a minor detail, and that's an issue with a minor. Alright, so I can finish a few of the, uh, parts here, and I'll just check a few, and see what's available. And, there really is a lot of raw materials. Completely turn around and the animation is uh, not getting so hot. So it looks like we're going to have to delete this corner. I don't know if we can delete it while it's, it can delete it while it's going. I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that. Anyway, we have finally delivered the shipments to the store. And I think there's one extra bit of beef meat in my factory. Uh, let's see, there's storage. Yeah, 
that's there's one extra bit of what? One extra kind of no still. Oh, so it works that way. distributes production it's not based on evenly splitting what comes in, it's based on evenly splitting it by demand. That makes sense. So we end up with a lot of extra same time, it's impossible to remember a span at this current space rate. So, there's a trade-off of, you know, it's gotta be difficult, but it's also kind of possible. Watching one train go very slowly is not too interesting. Yeah, now it wants to go on some other moves. Should definitely should probably start on infinite, and then if you want, you can set how many times we're not. Uh, that's something that definitely needs to be worked on. So obviously. People that are new to the game will have no idea really how to set that up easily. Oh, maybe you can change that. Anything else you got to do? Anyway, so I'll continue to see how this goes, but I really don't think. 